In a snowy Iowa cornfield lies the crumpled frame of a small aircraft. Scattered nearby on the ground are four young men in the helpless repose of death. It is the day the music died. Three of the four victims are young rock and roll musicians. Richie Valens, singer of La Bamba, the big bopper of Chantilly Lace fame, and Buddy Holly, the Texas-born pop pioneer. And somewhere near Holly's body, forgotten under the snow, are his trademark horn rim glasses. Ignored in the swirl of tragedy, these Mexican-made horn rims will be lost for decades. But their image will live on, a symbol of Holly's deep impact on American music. Buddy Holly was born Charles Harden Holly in Lubbock, Texas. When he was 14, Buddy came home and announced that a school eye test had revealed he needed glasses. So his mother took Buddy to Dr. Armistad right here in Lubbock, Texas. They checked his eyesight and unbelievably found his eyesight to be 2,800. But like any teenager, Buddy didn't want to wear glasses. Instead, he tried out a brand new device, contact lenses. But early contacts were big, they were rigid, and they were very uncomfortable. He could only wear them maybe 10 minutes at a time, and he was so miserable that uh, uh, it was, wasn't very long before he gave it up. So it was back to glasses. For most of his life, Buddy would wear a plastic and wire frame combination that today are often called split frame glasses. Still, as he spent more and more time playing on stage, he would sometimes try to do without them. He learned what a bad idea that was soon enough. Buddy dropped his guitar pick. He got down in front of that audience on his hands and knees looking for that pick and could not find it. I think he realized after that that he, he really he needed his glasses. The, the contacts certainly weren't going to work for him. So uh, he felt like if, if people were going to like him, they were going to like him with his glasses. And they did like him a lot. Buddy and his band, the Crickets, hit it big in the summer of 1957 with the single, That'll Be the Day. Touring America in the fall of 1957, Buddy and the Crickets made friends with fellow up-and-coming pop stars, the Everly Brothers, Phil and Don. And Phil Everly is the one that looked at Buddy and said, if you're going to wear glasses on stage, wear glasses. And I think that's when Buddy made the change from the wire rims to the horn rims. Switching to horn rims did nothing to diminish Buddy's popularity or hurt his quiet sex appeal. With the single Peggy Sue on the charts, Buddy was becoming as big a star as any pop troubadour of his day. Leaving the crickets behind in Lubbock, he went solo and moved to New York. And he decided to go with even heavier horn rings. And his optometrist, Dr. Armstead, was taking a vacation in Mexico City. And while down there, saw a pair of tortoise color and a pair of black color, very thick frames from Feoza Frames in Mexico. And he bought those and bought them back. He showed those to Buddy. And Buddy says, I'll take the black ones, put the other ones in my file. He never had the chance to wear the tortoiseshell glasses. On February 3rd, 1959, while on a midwinter tour of the Midwest, the four-seat airplane carrying Buddy and his fellow rockers crashed a few minutes after takeoff, killing all four on board. Holly's body was returned to Lubbock and buried there. Apparently, no one even noticed that the now famous glasses were not returned with him. Holly was 22 when he died. His career had only spanned a year and a half, but in that time, he had become one of the biggest names in pop. And Buddy had literally changed the face of music. John Lennon made the comment, ooh, now I can put on the specs and go back out on stage and perform, because he used to take them off every time with the Beatles when he came out. So Buddy made it okay. And that's one of the few things about Buddy Holly you don't hear talked about a lot. He made it okay to wear glasses on stage. For more than 20 years, there was no sign of the missing glasses. Then, in 1980, the sheriff of the Iowa County where the crash occurred was looking through old records when he came across a manila envelope marked Charles Harden Holly. Inside, along with a few other items belonging to the other victims, were Buddy's last horn-rimmed glasses. One of the earpieces was snapped. The lenses had been broken out, and the plastic was badly scratched from the accident. Since there were no records of the glasses on file, 
it was decided that they had probably been found in the cornfield by a farmer and turned in several months after the crash. The sheriff turned the frames over to Holly's widow. In 1996, she sold the glasses to an agency dedicated to promoting Holly's hometown of Lubbock, which in turn donated the glasses to the city's new Buddy Holly Center. The price tag of $80,000 caused a bit of a fuss, but the museum felt the glasses were worth it. They represent as much as anything that pop identity, the, uh, you know, who we think of when we think of Buddy Holly. Uh, you can see those glasses and without Buddy Holly and you know who it is. Buddy Holly's Mexican Fiosa brand black horn rimmed glasses are on public display at the Buddy Holly Center in Lubbock, Texas.